This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 523, Do You Struggle to Perform Under Pressure? by Allison Green with goodlifezen.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Welcome back, or welcome for the first time if you're new here. This is where I read to you every single day to help you live a more meaningful life, covering personal development, productivity, and minimalism from some of the best blogs you can find with their permission. And today I'm lucky enough to have a sponsor, Talkspace. Talkspace is the online therapy company that makes therapy affordable, convenient, and confidential. They handpick a therapist for you, and you can send text, audio, and video messages, or go live. It's definitely worth checking out. Just come by Talkspace.com old. That's Talkspace.com old to learn more. But for now, let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. Do you struggle to perform under pressure? by Allison Green with goodlifezen.com. Have you noticed how some people manage to do their best work when they perform under pressure? They nail the job interview, ace the presentation, and are always able to think on their feet. Are you one of those people? I'm not. When I'm under pressure, I struggle to do good work, and sometimes I do no work at all. I freeze. If you're familiar with this experience, then you will understand the frustration it causes. You know you're capable of so much more, but you struggle to show your best work. So why is this? The problem, choking. The problem is more common than most people realize. It's called choking. Sion Bellick, a University of Chicago psychologist and author of Choke, explains, quote, choking is performance that is inferior to what you can do and have done in the past and occurs when you feel pressure to get everything right, unquote. Why does it happen? Researcher Alison Wood Brooks, PhD, of Harvard Business School, explains that moderate amounts of pressure may enhance performance if it prompts thorough preparation. But if the pressure builds, our performance begins to decline as we resort to anxiety avoidance strategies like procrastination. When the pressure reaches debilitating levels, it can result in choking. Here's where it gets interesting. A high pressure and stressful situation for one person can be experienced completely differently by another. Stress is the result of our perception. The role of beliefs and expectations in determining our performance. Beyond skill, our beliefs about our abilities and expectations can affect our performance. There are two main categories of performance squelching beliefs. The first is about how we see our own abilities and strengths. Fixed versus growth mindset. Carol Dweck, a professor at Stanford University and author of Mindset, The Psychology of Success, shows how our conscious and unconscious beliefs have a profound impact on how we develop our strengths and abilities. Her research shows that people fall into two categories, those with a fixed mindset and those with a growth mindset. People with a fixed mindset believe that their strengths, intelligence, and talents are fixed. They're more likely to shy away from challenges and fear making mistakes. Their focus is on getting things right and view failure as a sign of a lack of innate talent or ability. On the other hand, people with a growth mindset believe that their talents and abilities can be developed. They seek out challenges and welcome feedback as an opportunity for growth. They would rather try something that stretches their ability so that they learn and fail than do something within their capability and succeed. Anticipating judgment. Then there's a second category of beliefs and expectations that affect performance, beliefs about how others will respond. Here, the research shows that people who commonly choke have a fear of negative evaluation. This is fairly self-explanatory. When people in a performance situation expect that they'll be judged and even humiliated, they're more likely to choke. The ability to perform well under pressure in stressful circumstances is one of the most important skills we can develop. Unfortunately, most of us don't know how to do this. The good news is that it is possible to train ourselves to not only survive, but thrive under stressful circumstances how I almost choked while writing this post. I've recently started blogging. This is an area I've been wanting to develop for a long time, but fear has held me back. A few weeks ago, I took the plunge. I posted a draft of a guest post I was writing in the A-List Blogging Masterclass Facebook group for review. I was terrified, waiting to be shown up as an incompetent writer. The opposite happened. My post was well-received and I got incredible feedback and two offers to guest post for successful blogs. Good Life Zen was one of them. I was overjoyed. But you probably already spotted the problem, the pressure, an invitation to write for this incredibly successful blog. I wanted to do my very best work. I wanted to show Mary that it was worth taking a risk with inviting me. I tried to come up with an idea for a topic that would be useful for her readers, but nothing came. 
I was about to choke. Luckily for me, something happened that helped me realize what I was doing. An excellent blogger and friend sent me a link to her new blog post. I read it and responded to her. Love your post, but I do have to confess I'm finding it hard to read your work. I'm suffering from a serious case of writer's envy. Her response was perfect. Don't be envious, I can teach you how to write. Oh, right, yes, skills can be developed. Struggling doesn't mean that I lack some sort of blogging gene. The shift. When I looked at what I was doing with my writing through this lens, something shifted. I realized that despite my conscious knowledge and beliefs that abilities could be developed, there was a deeper, more unconscious belief that my first post had been a fluke and I would not be able to replicate that success. The pressure was entirely self-generated. Approaching it from a different angle as an opportunity to grow and develop skills rather than expecting myself to succeed and avoid failure unlocked my creativity and allowed me to finish the draft. Now over to you. Don't just make this another blog post that you hear and feel inspired, but then do nothing about. Make it count. Take some time to share the areas that you struggle to perform in and what beliefs hold you back. Even just writing and sharing that is an important step in being able to shift those beliefs. You just listened to the post titled, Do You Struggle to Perform Under Pressure? by Allison Green with goodlifezen.com. And Allison Breen helps make people make the best use of their strengths, talents, and resources. She's a psychologist, actually, and that's a perfect segue into our sponsor today, Talkspace. I struggle under pressure big time. I didn't used to. Well, I always did with public speaking, but it affected my life outside of presentations, so I got help with that. A therapist is a really good step to take to help with things like this. Or if you just want to vent about work or relationships, family, talk through whatever's on your mind, a licensed therapist can help with a lot of that. And I wish I knew about Talkspace earlier or I wish they existed sooner because they connect you with a hand-picked therapist for as little as $32 a week. In my experience, that can easily be less than 10% of the cost for just one session with the therapist. That alone is a great reason to try them out, but I also love that you can communicate however you prefer. Text message, audio, video messages, or live. It's such a good idea. You can sign up or learn more through Talkspace.com slash OLD. They'll also show you the code OLD, which gives you $30 off your first month, making it even more affordable. This is something I know many of us can make great use of, so try it out. Again, that's Talkspace.com slash OLD, and you can use the code OLD for $30 off. I'll leave it there for today. Thank you for being here. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you in tomorrow's episode where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.